Thank you, Terry. It's recording. Um, let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you do not overwhelm us with anything. And Lord, you lead us like a child. You just give us the information as we need it, as we have to handle it. And Lord, step by step, you take things on from glory to glory. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the word that you've given for this, for this morning. And Lord, the vital touching our lives in your presence. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. This morning I wrote down a title for the preaching. Um, it said, We are loved, you are loved. Sounds good. I like it. We are loved, all together. And yet you as an individual is loved. Our reading comes from Romans chapter 8, 34 to 39. Romans chapter 8. Just excuse me while I change my glasses. I think I'll find it a little bit easier and comfortable. Romans chapter 8. Starting from 30, 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yes, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, no. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, no, not anything, any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wow. That's good. Nowhere in that says I've got to do anything. Nowhere in that says that anything in the past, anything in the future, nothing can separate me from God's love which has been revealed and worked through his son Jesus Christ for me. It's like a child born in the family. They are loved whether they like it or not. No matter what they do, they may get punished, they may get corrected, but they still love. This love of God for us is supreme, better than any human love. Some people find their parents have let them, let them down. It is natural for us to grow feeling missing out on some love because human love is not God's love. Human love is not complete. In one scripture that's I've just come to my mind, um, a father will correct 
their son, discipline their son for their own pleasure. But the Father's God's love is for eternal life. So this love we're talking about this morning is essential. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 4 says, When you are gathered together and my spirit with the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, Paul is writing in absence saying, With my spirit. Though Danny and Alex and their children, Reuben and Cherry are on sabbatical, not being present, yet they are present in spirit. They are present in heart. Their love and their heart for us has not diminished. Their concern for us is not reduced. Just the absence in body is not them being absent. They are still one with us. If you're like me, I've been in a church since I was born. Before I was born, I was going to church in my parents' womb. I've grown up in the church. I've seen pastors let the church down. I've seen a whole church that the pastor's here one Sunday and the next Sunday he's no longer here, he's gone. No warning. Danny has loved us so much that he's prepared us for the sabbatical. He's done his best to see that everything's in place. If there is anything gap lacking in that, God has it in hand, has our heart in hand to fulfil. So, Danny and Alex is still present with us. And that is great. And it's good to go through this time of their absence. We'll grow. We'll be strengthened. And it'll be a glorious reunion when they come back. It'll be a new season. We'll be no longer of the old past. We'll be of a new. I pray with all my heart that nobody feels that they've got to leave the church, leave this body. I just pray that we all find ourselves bonded together in a greater love. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3. God says that he has loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, he has drawn you to himself. Loving kindness is drawn you. The gentleness, being Mother's Day, the gentleness of a mother over a sucking child draws. We've also read this morning where God is love, God is eternal, God doesn't change, he's the same yesterday, today and forever. So I want to draw, try to draw you a picture, describe a picture of God's love for us, God's love for you. And I can only trust God to take this and to, to make it part of you. 
we, we can see the, the love expressed when two people are falling in love. Um, we've seen that in our church. We've seen it a few times uh, where young adults have fallen in love and the closeness and the eye contact and the, the hug, the touching, and, and that is just bonding. This love of the Father putting his arms around you and the love just draws you in and cuddles you. And that love has always been there. That love was there from before you were born. That love of the far, our Heavenly Father holding on to you and drawing you into himself and holding on to you with gentleness, with firmness. But we didn't always recognise it. We reacted to God's love around us. We reacted to people. We told them off. We've sworn, we've kicked. We've been hurt. We've argued, we've bitten, we've kicked. We've done all sorts of things to those around us, not realising that God's love is holding on to you between you and what you're doing. And God has borne every action that we've done against another person. It had to go through God's love that surrounded us to touch the other person. We thought we were being restricted, held back, rejected, forgotten, mistreated. But God's love was there. Not under stopping you forcefully, but God's love is without failure. God's love is eternal. God's love doesn't fail, doesn't fall short, doesn't stop. So when we've, we've kicked, we've beaten, we've argued, we've been filled with all this emotion, it landed upon Jesus upon the cross. It is our emotion and our reaction and our hurt that Jesus bore. And yet when Jesus died, his love didn't stop. He loved you so much that he came back, rose from the dead. After bearing it all, all our past hurts, rejection, Failure. And it wasn't just a little love, it was complete. So where we felt a lack of love, God loves fills us up to overflowing so that we no longer need to feel any lack, any failure. No failure from our parents, uncles, aunts, brothers and sisters, no lack of love because God's love is complete, full overflowing, there's no room for an emptiness there's no room for feeling lack when we've come to the end of ourselves, our own struggles and our own reactions then we've come awake to get God's love, while we are struggling, while we've been reactive, we haven't recognised God's love. Gone through hurts, gone through reactions, I'll do it my way, I think I know better. But when we've been stilled, become quiet, then we've responded to God's eternal love, drawing us with his loving kindness to bring us home, to bring us back into his family. 
the eternal family, the family of God. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, God demonstrated his love towards you that while you were yet sinners, Jesus Christ died for you. 1 Corinthians 13, 7. Love bears all things. God's love. Bared all things. Took upon himself all things. Love endures all things. Love never ends, never falls short, never stops. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever, that's me, that's you, whoever believes in him, believes in his Son, should not perish in sin, in our own reactions, in our own self, but have eternal, have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world. God doesn't condemn you for all your past, for all that you've done. God doesn't condemn you but that the world, that you, through Jesus, might be saved. Great picture. God is always looking for the best, expects the best, hopes for the best. Not looking for the worst, not looking for where he needs to create. God is excited. He's pleased, he loves, and he rejoices in when we embrace that, his love, by loving others, letting it overflow. You're not full until you're overflowing. You're not full of God's love until you actually pour it out onto somebody else. The Bible says that. Freely we have received, so freely give. And giving is the evidence of your overflowing, of your fullness. So if anybody's been touched by the sermon, been touched by God this morning, you're willing to come forward and we'll pray for you, we'll give thanks for you in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. Amen.